Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. I'm starting this on the file select screen just to draw attention to what level Gary Stu is. 56. This might not seem that major unless you're very well aware of the personas available in this game, because guess who's level 56? Yeah, this episode's gonna be a bit of... it's gonna be something. Yeah. I might as well cut straight to the chase and just go into the Velvet Room and show a certain name who's now appeared in our Persona Fusion list. Yep, the one right under Hurity. Yep, that's him. It's the one. So, I'm pretty much obliged to fuse this Persona now. I will just warn you beforehand, this is probably the reason why this game has an M rating in America, so if you don't want to see this or you are eating at the time you're watching this video, please look away now. Because... it's Mara. Yeah. By the way, Mara learns myriad arrows, so you know that broken combo you can do? You can do that with Mara if you want to. Ugh. Okay, uh... Uh, let's see. I actually want to check how much money I have. Because I actually need to fuse Mother Harlot right now. Because I really want to get... Uh, I want to replace uh, Alra Une as my Salome's Kiss user. But I need to fuse Binding <sighs> Hands. And the only way I can do that is via... Oh, I don't have much money at all. That is not good. Because I don't want to get rid of Kuhulan. Unless I make Mara my new Link persona, which sounds really horrifying. I don't want to use Mara for too long if I can help it, but... Okay, I can't pass down Golden Link. That means that I can't use Mara as my new Link persona. Thank you. <sighs> like I said, though, I kind of want to get Mother Harlot. And I need to do it this way, Black Rider and Jin. Uh, I would level up Black Rider until he learned Judgment Sword. The problem is Judgment Sword can't actually be passed down to Mother Harlot. I will register him though. Because you're very close to learning Judgment Sword. I don't think I even have the filler to sacrifice for that. Not really, because I need Jin for, again, Mother Hollard. Yes, the reason why I'm going for this is specifically Binding Hands. Absorb Lek is nice. Let's see, Much is not bad to have. I need Binding Hands. And uh, I don't really need the Circles. But I suppose I can continue to pass down Circle Recovery. Is and so, apart from Salome's Kiss, Binding Hands, and Absorbing Electricity, what has Mother Harlot ever done for us? Kind of an obscure reference, but anyway. Mother Harlot is based on the Book of Revelation, um, a direct allegory for the Roman Empire, as described in the Book of Revelation. But anyway... Oh, great. I have to immediately fuse Mother Harlot away if I want to do this. And I lose uh, Oyamatsumi. Okay, let me just quickly check how expensive all of these are in the compendium. So, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, Poison Breath is possible to pass down. Okay, how about Binding Hands, because that kind of fits. Uh... I guess Dragon Cry, first star. If you don't learn in pure reach eventually, I'm gonna be very, very surprised. I'm pretty sure you do. Uh I guess Mataru Kaja. No, this is not the persona I want, but I kinda have to for the compendium. Okay, class, please describe to me what Mara represents in his purest form. Phallic symbol, phallic symbol. Oh. 
I think that's directly taken from one of the Persona games, but I... I... Yeah, you just had to say penetrate, didn't you? Anyway, yeah, we now have Mara. Joy. Okay, by dumping a bunch of things that I had in storage that I don't need, like a few pieces of outclassed armor and outclassed weapons for Zen, I can now uh, afford to get Mother Harlot out of the compendium. While I'm here, just for the obligatory... obligatoriness of doing this... Where are you? Yeah, Tower Arcana, because of course you're Tower Arcana. Yes, Mara is in fact based on an actual thing from mythology. Though some games refer to Mara as female. Though, even when female, Mara still looks like that. So, uh, yeah. Mara is a thing that exists in these games. And I think I'll, I'll do my party setup now, and I'll go back into the labyrinth, and there I'll talk at length about things regarding Mara. Yes, I have prepared Mara tangents for this episode. Unfortunately, unlike in uh, P3 Portable, the Velvet Room attendants don't comment if you uh, go into their rooms with Mara equipped. Anyway, last time I said that we were going to explore the Eastern Land next. However, since we've used Mara, I think it's only fitting that, and I apologize this in advance, I normally really don't make these kind of jokes, but um, I kind of feel like... I can just say Mara is manipulating my mind, but yes. Since we have used Mara, we are obliged to explore the Northern Territory of the One-Eyed Monster. It opened. Which, by the way, I actually do ironically consider that one of the best localizations of a language-specific joke I've ever seen in my life. Why don't we go you know, what's better than one Dragon Cry boosted myriad arrows while the enemy is defense debuffed and panicked? How about two of them in the same turn? This is going to be really, really fun. Uh, no, then you'll run out of uh, SP quickly. I might as well have Yukari use Medea Rama. Wow, Yukari has a lot of SP thanks to that all-round badge. Yolks doesn't really have anything to do here. And yep, there it is. There is the summoning. And we get a second one. Same turn. Wow, that coming from Kanji hits absurdly hard. Yeah, really no, shows the difference in strength the stats there. Uh, I, I guess. For a second there, I, I forgot that was a voice we that we'd already okay? heard from Kanji. I thought that Kanji would be just saying, uh, in uh, response to Mara being here. Oh yeah, that does heal more, I think, thanks to Gary Stu's healing hand. Damn, it's gone out. But anyway, here we are in Genbu's Northern Territory. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I still consider that one of the best localizations of a Japanese presume. Like, uh, thankfully I didn't actually have that spoil for me. I had someone say that there was a moment in the game that, that people were really surprised that, that, they let, uh, that they let oh, them get shit. away with it in a Nintendo yeah, game. Really and when I saw that scene, I was like, yep, yeah, that's the scene people were talking about, wasn't it? But, yeah, it's from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and in the Japanese version, Nia basically called, uh, okay, that's the Genbu gate, so where's Genbu? Genbu is second, so we're gonna mark this as a black two, even though there's no black, so I guess I'll have to just do this. This gate I actually find the most annoying to get through, because the moment that you run through there, both of the fast guys are gonna be chasing you. But yeah, in the Japanese version, Nia called Zeke something like Turtle Head, which is a Japanese euphemism for yeah, but that doesn't really fit in English. Blue Dragon protects the Eastern Land, well we know that. There's also a game called Blue Dragon that I think got a lot of, like, it was hyped up decently well, but I think it ended Whoa, up being considered fairly me. average. But anyway, yeah, in the English Look version, the up ahead. Don't you think it looks kind of they preserve strange? the accidentally gentle innuendo by having the uh, call Zeke that, in reference to his eye patch. Oh. There's an unlit torch in a room with festival dudes. That's a recipe for disaster. We remember the events of the previous part. 
thankfully now, I'm going back. Let's unlock a shortcut here. Yeah, already we've seen two different types of FOEs in this one area. Yeah, the Northern Land, I think, is the most annoying of all of them by yeah, far. Because it has fast guys, it has sweaty guys, it has festival dudes, it's got all of them. And that's a blocked tile. That's an interesting combination. Keep your guard up. Uh, is this one shadow or three? No <laughs> Thankfully, Mara is not weak to ice in this game, even though he usually is. Except when he's a basic enemy in Persona 5, when he isn't, but if you recruit him as a Persona, then he is. Stupid shitting AI. It is kind of tradition in most games to have Mara learn the ultimate pierce attack. And Myriad Arrows is pretty close to the ultimate pierce attack in this game. Oh, didn't get the power charge one in. Oh well. And we get a non-disturbing looking persona. That one was really strong. Who I might actually want to have set to Yosuke, because I like having Hammer here. Yeah, you have Mother Harlot, but I'd probably rather level her up with sacrifices than with um, regular experience at this point. A lot of people have said, though, that it seems a lot easier to level up personas in this game, thanks to the whole sub-persona system. I can't step on that. Can't step on those either, at least not yet. You guys are just going between two squares at this point. And I can't step on that tile either, this room is annoying me. Oh, a treasure box. What should we do? Well, we can't actually open it yet. Let's keep moving. Also, guess who's in this room? Damn, there's an FOE over there. Definitely, I think they're probably my least favorite FOE in the whole game in terms of movement patterns. Okay, I might want to mark these in different colors now because that's going to get really tricky to keep track of. These ones cover a lot of ground. I feel like I should probably try and run from this fight. Yeah, if I was being totally optimal, Mother Harlot should go on Gary's stew for the electricity, um, draining, but I just couldn't resist the joke. And I do have the lightning gloves, when they work. Well, at least you're not weak to that. I said I want to try and run from this, but they don't seem to be letting me. And I believe Healing Hand is buffing the Renewal Aura as well. It's a skill that I didn't really think much- I'm glad I got away then, otherwise we'd have a sweaty guy in the fight. But yeah, I- it's a skill that I... It's a skill that I didn't really give much thought to until I read the description on the SMT wiki and realised that... It being on even one character buffed the healing of your entire party, including the Navigator. Dangerous fight. I'm glad you're safe. Huh? It wasn't that dangerous, really. <laughs> Must explore. Definitely something rooms. up with that wall over there. Let's go see. 
thankfully, this one isn't one way. And yeah, we can now finally get this. Vault Pin. I think I know what that does, actually. Greatly reduce elect damage. Huh. Does that get rid of your weakness or not? I feel like it doesn't, actually. I'm gonna try that out for now and see if it, like, just to test that theory. It probably doesn't get rid of your weakness. Okay, now I can actually step here. Except I'm stuck now. Dang it! Anything for floor completion, I guess. You know, while I'm on my way back, I guess I can talk about the Mara tangent that I plan to go on. So, Mara. There are a lot There's of people who ahead. think that Mara is the sole reason, well, the main reason why the series gets M ratings in America, and Atlas keeps denying that that's true. Oh, Damn. I guess I have the fire There's here. There's an FOE here. Okay. Damn. Fire went out. Could I have actually got the fire over there? Let me just quickly check that. Sorry, I'm interrupting my tangent. And last, wait a minute, let me try again. Go, Jiraiya! I guess here's another sort of a semi-tangent, but I kind of like the strategy that I have going with this party against this thing. Double Dragon Cry, double Myriad Arrows, and try and panic it early. That's something that I like about using multiple different parties in this game. Oh, if that had hit, I would have been able to see what the Vault Pin does. Is that you get to experiment with a lot of different strategies for the same enemies. I probably should switch all Yamatsumi over to Shinjiro because then I have three Dragon Cries because Kanji has that naturally. Glad we beat that one. So back to that tangent. The thing is, I feel like Atlas's claims there don't really hold water because... Three. Let's not fight that one again. Kanji, you're pretty banged up. Did you even notice that? Basically, if you compare the games and spin-offs that are uh, M-rated and the ones that are not M-rated, you notice the ones that aren't M-rated tend to have something in common. I still can't step on that tile, wow. Whoa! I found an FOE! I think the biggest example here is the Devil Survivor series. Those games have some really gory deaths in them. And some incredibly disturbing themes when you think about it. Like, the first Devil Survivor is all about Dude, how quickly human society, um, both metaphorically and literally, goes to hell during the apocalypse. And it does a disturbingly realistic job of depicting that. Just how quickly order breaks down and how quickly people just start murdering everyone. But, uh, and also, Devil Survivor 2 has, like, you see clips of how your Damn. teammates are going There's to die, and... Some of them are incredibly graphic, while a few others taunt you by by having the character's actual death be even worse than the death clip showed it would be. And yet, those games still have T ratings or the equivalents. And well, they don't have Mara. Meanwhile, this game, which besides some of the reveals that happen at the end of this dungeon, and I guess the blood in the Evil Spirit Club? Honestly, I don't think there's anything in this game that's really M-worthy at all. In fact, I completely disagree with this game's M rating in America. But yeah, this game has Mara, and in fact, when they were doing a Q&A with the official localization team before Persona Q came out for the first time, one of the questions asked was, is Mara going to be in this game? And they just got a flat yes. <sighs> Huh, another break. I get suspicious, they gave us a few breaks that did heal us, so I feel like there's gonna be one that will have an ambush eventually. Okay. 
Nuh-uh. <laughs> that is kind of true. However, all of them kind of don't like him. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about most of the time, definitely no. If you're talking about Tokyo Mirage Sessions, it gives you superpowers, so I guess yes. Hmm. But, yeah, Yukari, uh, if you actually talk to Rise, you'd realize that Stardom is not what it's cracked up to be at all. I see. I think that's actually uh. why they're named that way. What? Wait, well, yeah, there really are the kind of people who are like that. <laughs> so, Junpei is now a scalper. Let's just hope he doesn't get hold of, am of amiibos. Oh, okay. Okay, this one did actually heal us. I guess they give you a lot of actual healing in this dungeon because... In this floor, because this floor in particular is incredibly long and, um, kind of draining. There's only one, but it's strong. Watch out! I've got this! <laughs> I've got this! Immediately fails to escape. Oh yeah, I had a feeling your territory stretch at the very end of the room. Oh, great. I see some walls that aren't filled in. The uh, filling them in was easier than I expected. Actually, getting through this room is not that hard at all. So anyway, there's a little more regarding that Mara tangents. In Australia, as I've probably hey, mentioned back. a few times before, The Persona and Shin Megami Tensei games only got the equivalent of T ratings. That is, until Shin that Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, which got the equivalent of America's M rating, although in our case it's the age recommendation is only 15 and not 17. Our ratings are a little weird. We go um, G, PG, recommended 15, and 15 restricted, and then 18 restricted. So yeah, that game got an MA15 plus rating in Australia for, and I quote, high impact sexualized imagery. So at first I didn't really make that, that much of that. Weird. And honestly I was thinking it more was referring to a certain scene regarding Inanna and one of the party members. Hey, we're being followed by an Ah, uh, hi there, I guess it saw me through that wall. Good. Not chasing us I think we've actually explored most of the of this entire area. Question now remains, how do I get fire over here? Oh, that's how I'm missing a shortcut. There's one here. Don't you think that wall looks kind of suspicious? And then uh, I believe it would get yeah, no, a. Actually, the next game after that would be Persona 5. Persona 5 also got slapped with an MA rating for high impact sexualized imagery. And I was like, okay, but that could probably refer to some of the things in Kamoshida's dungeon and also the whole Kamoshida subplot in general. Okay, it looks like that does remove your weakness. Which I think to me makes it more reliable than the Lightning Gloves. Because they totally block electricity, but not all the time. Whereas the Volt Pin removes your weakness and reduces the damage significantly. Yeah, I'll actually keep this now. That was a close one. Back to what I was saying regarding Mara. So that came out and I was like, yeah, you know, probably the entire Kamoshida subplot because P5 is actually one of the few Persona games where I feel the M rating is justified. I guess for P3 with the Evokers, I, I guess that sort of makes sense, but I still don't think P4, even though, yeah, I guess cultural dissonance with America. America definitely treats Kanji and Risei's dungeons a lot differently. Careful. Oh, fire's run out. Well, I haven't seen one of you in a while. Oh no, an FOE! Hurry up and run! Dude! We definitely gotta get out of here! 
I don't know, Kanji and Reese's Dungeons never really came across as that extreme to me, but then again, the American rating system is a lot harsher on anything sexual. Like Mara, but anyway. But yeah, P5 does have... I, I really need to map out that full room. P5 does have some pretty gory scenes in it, and of course the entire Kamoshida plot, which is right at the beginning of the game, by the way. All of that definitely warrants an M rating, I think. But... I'm going on ahead. Then, uh, then Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux got released. And that game got an MA rating in Australia for, again... There are three enemies. Good luck. Not that I care, but doesn't that pose hurt? For strong sexualized imagery. And then I realized, ah, I see what's going on here. It looks like the Australian ratings board has finally discovered Mara exists. Torch has gone out. That's what I think happens. Shh, careful. There's an FOE here. I think it helped that in P3 and P4 and this game, it's pretty easy to avoid noticing Mara. Damn. You have to go out of your There's way to actually here. use Mara in order to ever see it. Whereas in P5, Mara is a mandatory mini boss and shows up. Um, and shows up as a regular enemy in the final dungeon, and you're pretty much inevitably going to see it. And in Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, Mara is a side quest boss who has actual voice dialogue. So, Mara being a lot more visible in those games... I'm going to mark out the whole Genju area in. No, that's probably too dark. Yeah, this is slightly darker than, than the rest of the floor, but not too dark. Like I was saying... Yeah, those games probably increase Mara's visibility, and that means that probably the only reason that the earlier Persona games got lower ratings in Australia was because our ratings board didn't know about Mara until relatively recently. So there's a bit of trivia for you. I'm gonna try and find a way to step on those floor tiles in the Festival Dudes room. I might even have to waste some Vanish Balls walking into them if worse comes to worse, because I really want those those tiles filled out. But one more thing that I can mention. Oh shit! That FOE's really close. I did find it hilarious back when P5 first came out, and P5 was interesting Damn, in that out. Persona of, um Okay, I guess I can step on these tiles now. Uh basically. Persona 4 used to be the big newbie boom game of this series. It used to be the game that got a huge amount of mainstream gamers into Persona, and it was like the only one that mainstream gamers ever talked about, like a certain game in the Fire Emblem series. And then P5 came out, and P5 was an even bigger newbie boom than, uh, uh, than P4 was. So now P4 actually feels underappreciated by comparison. Which is interesting, because I remember the days when everyone hated how overexposed P4 was, but it's kind of the other way around now. Oh, I just realized there's another tile in there. But anyway, the fact that, um, that P5 was a huge newbie boob game meant that a lot of people on Twitter, like a lot of people that I follow on YouTube, um, were basically playing a Persona game for the first time, and it was really fun to see everyone's reactions to Mara for the first time. Oh, I still can't find a way to step on that tile, but I have a feeling I, I, I doubt that one counts. It looks virtually impossible to step on without encountering the festival dudes. With that, so ends the part where I talk about Mara, and next time we'll be exploring the eastern land of the Azure Dragon. See you all then.